What's up guys? You know what day it is. Matt Carmichael is here. So let's take a look and see what he's got on the truck. So you guys, come on. Finally the weekend, huh? Yeah, I've been ready for it all week. Uh-oh. You must have done good last week and let the boss lady off today. Ah, uh, boss lady's off today. Uh, we did sell a cart uh, Wednesday, so that was good. Cool. Uh, it's been a it's been a high sale week. We've had a lot of good stuff. Got a lot of stuff ordered. Um, That's always a good thing. Got new tools in this week to show. New tools. Oh, we do. We got Everybody new tools. Loves new tools. Uh, we've had a couple, nothing just huge, huge, um, but new tools to us, and that's that's always exciting. Um, so I'm gonna put both of these up here. That way I can show the difference in the two. Okay. And then I'm gonna grab one more right back here. Uh, let's see here. Go ahead and show them all at once. That way we can talk tools. Talk tools. So we'll start with these. These are new um, to us. They're made by Nipix. They're for um, guys like me that like electrical, mm -hmm. that deal with a little fine, uh, tedious wire cutting and stuff like that. These are made for that. They get real nice and close. Um, I like them because they're small and, and they're smooth. Yeah. Um, I mean, they got Nipix all over them, so it's not, you know, we know their quality is, mm -hmm. is high. Um, but I feel like for anybody that does a whole lot of wrecks or anything that's doing a lot of like the fuse boxes and stuff like that, uh, if you're if if you're lucky enough to get the insurance company to agree to do the whole harness, yeah, this ain't this, this ain't this, for you. This ain't for you. <laughs> but if you're like we was and had to splice solder and everything else, I think these right here are awesome for that. You yeah. know, and and even more so, not only that, but. Um, a lot of guys on here probably have hobbies and stuff as well, like the, mm -hmm. the smaller remote control cars that go, you know, 50 mile an hour or whatever, yep. or more. Um, these are good for little small electrical and stuff like are that. Are those the flush cut version? Yes. I, uh, if you look on the back. Yeah. See, I've got like a, a cheaper version of that. Like, yeah. And <laughs> this is what's crazy. Like, the blue point set. Is man, it looks like it was just garbage, like super cheap. But I like that style. But I've always said that. I said I wish they made a heavier duty, like a nicer set. Yeah. You know, well, there we go. So. Yeah. Well, and I'll show the difference. And I don't uh, know how much them are, but uh, I don't either. I got them in this morning, so <laughs> I like them. <laughs> uh, but I want. I don't know if anybody has ever. I'm sure a lot of people know, but I don't know if anybody's ever broke down why they call them flush cut and why they not. So this here is another pair of the Nipix flush cut. I'm just gonna grab another pair of cutters off the ceiling here. So hey, let me ask you a question real quick, because if I don't, I'll forget, because that's how I think I'm getting Alzheimer's. <laughs> this here, so that, what kind of warranty does that have? Or is it like just you buy it when you wear it out, you buy it? I think it's gone. when you wear it out, you're, you're, you're through. Because uh, it's like any other grinder, but I'll look it up right quick. Because um, that one, like I've been going through those little, just those small grinding discs that you throw away. Yeah. And it seems like every time you yeah, set it down on the table, it breaks. Yeah, th this is this is actually, uh, it doesn't have a warranty. Quick little story on it. Um, I had a guy that was buying like those right there that stapled to the wall. Yeah. And that's, he said he was. the ones I'm talking about like on my grinder. Yeah. It's like. That, I don't wear them out. I always end up breaking them because you'll set them down and it, they'll yeah. just chip. You know? Well, he says he works at a junkyard and he says that he goes through about a pack of those a week. Mm -hmm. And this come out and he's like, man, it's smaller. You know, he was the same way, you know, three and one. And he was like, you know, what? what's the value of paying $30 for one? And, and I was like, well, I, I don't know. I've never used it, but clearly if it's thirty dollars it's going to last longer so what he actually did is he actually took it he said let me try it for a week or two and i'll pay for it either way but i can give you i said well uh, if you're going to give me a review on it i don't want you to pay for it go try it if it breaks in the first day well then we know that, that not to reorder right um 
and I really haven't had anything like that that I've ever done. But mm -hmm. he took it. He loves it. He's still using it. It's been two and a half months. Holy cow. So I don't know. I don't know that everybody can duplicate those results mm -hmm. because everybody cuts different metals. Everybody, some people lay their tools down. Some people throw their tools down. I, I don't know. But he's, he was really afraid about it, it, it wearing down really, really quick. He told me he'd be glad to pay thirty dollars again when it wears out. It just hasn't done it. So, well, that answers uh, my question. Then. So, uh, I everybody should try it one time. You know, uh, it said on here somewhere. I was trying to read it real quick. I thought it had like a uh, a usage thing, but I, I don't see it anymore. But uh, yeah, he he loves that. That's one of the tools that he really likes. And, and he's an honest guy. He he's one of those that you almost don't want to ask a question in front of five people if you don't want everybody knowing the answer to, because he's going to tell you the truth right up front. And you know I like that about him. I think I'm gonna have to try one of them because, like, I never get wore down. Like yeah. that, they always break before. Yeah. Um, like drill bits and stuff. He goes through a good amount of drill bits and stuff too. Um. He told me up front our drill bits were good, um, mm -hmm. and but the, the main thing is there's been a couple of things that he he's come to me he's like look it's good but it just it's not it's not what I thought it was and I'd be like yeah well, I understand um, but but as far as the drill bits and those he has no problem. Yeah. Um, Them drill bits are bad of the bones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we took them off the truck that time and went in there and drilled a hole through the truck frame with them. Yeah. Um, it it is that they're great. Now I've got all timers. I don't remember what was that. Let's see. You're going to talk about flush oh cuts yeah flush cuts. Flush so cuts. if you look on here, these are these are flush cut. Now these are for plastic, so these are like um, zip ties and stuff. But as you'll see, it's flush on the bottom. So when you cut the wire, it's 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 flush because it goes all the way to it. Mm -hmm. And I had some guys that didn't understand. If you look at your regular pliers, they they, they be in. Yeah, so you're like going to have in them. yeah. So you're even when you're all the way to the object you're gonna have that mm -hmm. much left over so that's the big difference on flush cut and non and believe it or not some people don't hasn't ever been told that and and honestly when I was a technician I just always grabbed these because I didn't ever really think about there was flush cut pliers I, I guess I just didn't pay enough attention but either way uh, yeah that's the difference so like I used my pair that's similar to those a lot for zip ties. Well, see, and that's like what these are. Cutting them off of the yeah, you know, um, cutting zip ties off of. Well, and that's what these is made for. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you, that saves the next man. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're putting it back together and you use a zip tie, you just cut it. You don't. Matter. I'm talking about like you know how they put them around the wire loom. Yeah, all and, I know. In the automotive, that may not be as big as a big truck, but like. You always having to cut that wire loom because it's full of salt and crap, yeah. you know, road debris. And my issue with why I like this style better is you can get it in there, yeah, you know, and clip the yep. wire loom easier than trying to put it underneath the little square part of the zip tie yep. and cut it off and all yep. that. Well, I've never thought about that, but I like it also just because it, it don't leave that razor sharp mm -hmm. that the next person's gonna cut their hand wide open. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I like I like flush cut pliers, and I like these because they're small, they're precise, and, and you know I'll probably own some of these if I don't own these already. Well, either. we need to figure the price of them out because I yeah, might just we, you might and, and if you need to show them the rest of the week, that's fine. I can get them. No, I uh. If you only have one pair. Because unless there's something crazy, I'm going to get them. Uh, they don't, I don't think they're crazy. They're $43 right okay. now. So I, I don't, I don't see the, I don't see them being crazy. I've paid more for less. Yep. So now I've got the two lights up here. This one has been in our flyer a couple of times. Uh, it's been out. I really like this one, but I'm going to show you what I like about this one more than I like about this one. They're both a thousand lumens. This one goes a little further. Uh, but They've come out with a smaller one, and I like it better because of one little thing on it. In fact, I opened it up, this one up last night, just to see if it was the same way. All right, on this one, you can see how big the the top part is. Right. But you also see how bar, how big the back part is. Mm -hmm. Now this does come off. It it'll un, it'll unclip, and you can put it on your side. 
that way it's not that big bulky on the back of your head but it's still big and bulky now this will take rechargeable batteries that it comes with or it can take double a i think but it takes smaller batteries so that's good i just don't like the bigger back on it uh, plus that's big and bulky too i love this light because it's super bright i've got some guys that's bought them they love them in fact this one's already pre-sold but this one here i like because right out of the start it's smaller up front i got this back in, back in the box once right i'll never do it again <laughs> yeah, that's a miracle oh uh, yeah that's a whole lot smaller so it's smaller up front but also the back is a whole lot smaller mm -hmm. so i like that feature about it and i i mean a thousand lumens so it's the same in lumens it's I think a hundred meters shorter in distance. I think this one's 350 and this one's 250. Or no, that one's 300 and this one's 250. So 50 meters difference. I, I like this one better, right. in, in my opinion. Um, it's still kind of bulky in the back, but it's not nowhere near as bulky as the other one. Pros and cons of both. If the rechargeable's dead, I can throw some regular batteries in that other yeah. one. But this one here, if I just keep it charged. It, it, you know, it's, it's, in my opinion, a little better. And it's new to us. Um, it's got the seven-year warranty that LED Lenser uh, carries. Of course, it's it's made by them. I don't know if you can read it on the box or not. but uh, So here's the two. So uh, the smaller one's an H7R Core. Yes, and then that and one's H14R2. One. Now, uh, the part number for this one, it's going to be MTH 14 R2. So if you're looking for something like that, uh, that's the part number on that one. Let me see if they put me a little sticker on here. It may. They didn't put me a little sticker on here. Let me see if I can look it up. Man, I've got so used to that neck light that I got from you, and I wear it up there on, on my head most of the time. I, that's kind of my go to. <laughs> go to light for. Stuff like that. Yeah, uh, those are those are really nice. I've got guys that do a lot of uh, like camping and there uh, here local. There's like some caves you can go to, mm -hmm. and they like going to those with these. So, um, yeah, I don't know the part number of this one. I'll have to sit down and. Look, see Look what I can up. find. Yeah, that's always fun. Uh, but either way, your your dealer should have these coming to them if they get the new product. If not, just ask about them. They can find them. Uh, any any of the dealers that signed up on the new product pipeline should be getting them. Uh, I recommend at least comparing them, um, which we just did. So if if you like the smaller back, this one's definitely the one. If you mm -hmm. want it to have more options as far as power, this is the one. So we talked about new catalogs coming out. I'm actually going to give you one. Oh yeah, we can that way that. you can. That, this is the best catalog that I've ever seen. So, being in the, the tool industry for eight years, or I've been in the mechanic world for eight years, and then this for two, so ten years. This is the best catalog that I looked at them, and I've looked at a lot. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this with you, but okay. uh, they did a really good job. But I think one of the best thing they did is they uh, did a whole lot better on our toolbox section. It gives you a lot more breakdown what all can happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say this, uh, this was in the making before they decided to do away with the 5S. So it does have 5S in here, We're that, that's going away. Uh, but the 4S is 6Xs and they have all the new slide tops, the details on them, so really good material. Your dealer should be, if he ordered any, he should be getting them. If not, you might ask him for one. Uh, Do they have a box in there that looks as good as my box? You know? Because uh, I'm going to say I probably got one of the at least top 10 boxes <laughs> that's been made today. Uh, I agree. I think it, see the other, the older catalog had a box just like yours in it. I don't, they didn't put it in here this time. Uh, they used a blue one instead of a white and blue, but. Yeah, I agree. Nope. There, there it is. There it is. So basically... They did better 
on the color it looks like on yeah the blue. they did color so yeah there's that with just add side lockers which is right there and that's what what yours looks like so yeah it's in there but you know that's a good feeling every day when i walk in that shop i turn the lights on that box is sitting there <laughs> like when you flip the lights on you're like Whew. That's a good looking box right there. You know you got a good looking box. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of questions that I saw in the comments. Good Lord at the comments. There were so many. Uh, I don't care to, to answer those questions. Um, if we both get time to do like a live thing where people can ask questions, I don't care to do that. Yeah. I can't tell you that I can answer every single question, uh, but I can find the answer or I can get it. Um, but there's, there's a lot of ways that you can make a box yours. So the ones like flipping the drawers over uh, in the side lockers, I don't see why you couldn't. Yeah. Uh, if that's something you want to do, then yeah, go for it. Um, as far as um, I had, I saw a question about, you know, it, does it have the locks like the snap on to keep the drawers coming open? Ours is a little different. We don't mm -hmm. have the locks underneath the handle. We have the dials on the side of the, the boxes which turn up tension. Uh, so you can have it to where you think the box is locked. I still catch myself trying to find that. Trying to find it, like, yeah. So now I've kind of got used to it a little bit. Yeah. So now when I go to my roll cart, like I'm going to be breaking some of those little plastic because <laughs> like I grab it, want to jerk on well, it. Well, see, now. and that's the thing. That's why I really, um, it's, it's not a bad thing. Um, I just, I don't like the locks like that. Mm -hmm. When I was a technician, um, somehow Toyota had made it where they had to have all the same boxes and it had to be a certain layout. And so we had a, a BMW dealership that was in the making, had ordered all these snap-on, uh, company snap-on toolboxes that bolted down and all this. And uh, they decided they wouldn't open that dealership anymore. So somehow the, the owner of the store that I worked at was able to buy them and that's what we had in our store. Well, they had the, the sliding locks. Well, I got used to that, but I still, every once in a while, catch myself just pulling the drawer, and the next yeah. thing you know, it was it was broke. Break it, yeah. But the main thing that people didn't know that it was there, and they'd want to come borrow you a tool from, say, the parts department or mm -hmm. sales or wherever it might be, clean up, they would just yank, yeah. and it was broke. That's the only thing I don't like about it. Mm -hmm. and, and there's nothing they can really do about it. It's, it. It makes sense to be plastic. makes sense to be there like that. It's just getting people in that habit. I, and this is going a little far out there. I like the way some of the Cornwall boxes have the lift up. The, the flip up. Yeah. I like that. But out of all uh, out of all of them, I like the way Mako just has the mm. tension on the side. I do too. I like just because I know you've been there before, like in a hurry, and you just yeah. like grab it and jerk. That's so, nice to do yeah, that. Yeah, it's and you know where your tension's at. Now, mm. if you are in a shop full of Mako boxes, have fun with it every once in a while. Go turn the other guy's tension all the way up so he thinks he's locked. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've seen that happen. I've I've did that, you know. But uh, it the slides, you know, like I said in the video, they're heavy duty slides. Um, when I first started, the trainer was standing in drawers like crazy, and I was like, oh gosh. Now I I, I don't I don't I don't doubt it a bit. I'd mm -hmm. stand in them too. I'm not gonna stand in another box, another man's box. But if it's on the truck, I would. But um, yeah, uh, I don't. I don't remember any other questions. I'm sure there's several through the video that I know I read and I had a good good response, but I, <laughs> I forgot them. Yeah, somebody was asking what the price was. Like, can you change, let's say my white and blue, heaven forbid I ever get tired of the blue and I said, hey, I want to put red trim on it. Yeah, so you most definitely can. Um, I've never done it, so I'll have to look it up and mm -hmm. I'll try to uh, I'll try to have it next week. I'll try to write it down and remember. I don't think it's um, un ungodly to do it. Uh, and if if I was your dealer and that was what you know, we, every once in a while I've seen distributors actually change it out on the truck because that's the only thing keeping the sale from happening. Yeah. So I don't think that it's it's ungodly by any chance. But that's just like um, I've seen people wrap their toolbox, have it wrapped because. Mm -hmm. Well, they bought, say, red. Well, now they, well, yeah, like Bill. Black or whatever. Bill yeah. was, you know, green, 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 green. Well, then he got sick of green. So, you know, it, technically he could wrap his box mm. in blue or orange or whatever. 
same way with the trim uh, on the cart just a little harder um, as far as ordering it it's no harder well but, you know the one Mac does it's magnets yeah so you can just peel it off and then put it back on there yeah and then they tell you you can take that those magnet strips to somewhere that does vinyl wrap and you can put your kids faces on it whatever you want on there yeah that, that's pre like that's a pretty cool kit yeah. to do so we've actually had um people wrap those as well they'll take them off and they'll take them to a wrap company and or they would just take their whole box and have mm -hmm. it or have them come in or whatever and they would wrap that that's such high quality trim i wouldn't wrap it i just no, it, I unless the, unless we find out that i'm wrong and the cost is just ungodly but i guarantee you it's going to be a whole lot cheaper than trading boxes. Than trading boxes. I love trading boxes, mm -hmm. but like your box, the only way I'd ever try to upgrade you is to a Revel, uh, and they'd have to have all the accessories like you mm -hmm. like and stuff like that. That's the only way we'd ever, you know. Well, like I'm stuck on that color, like yeah, you know, man. Like I say, you know, you got the right color when you walk in and turn the lights on and you smile when you see. So your box. the good thing about it is when you know you've bought the right box is when you've bought it, it's been delivered, it's been set up. And a week later, you're still walking in and still smiling about mm -hmm. it. You don't have that buyer's remorse. Yeah. You don't have. That's when you know you bought the right box. You bought the box that you wanted. But you know, I wanted that box a long time. You know, the very yeah. first video we did, we I mentioned a white box, a blue trim, and then. Well, and you know, and the, I guess like I like I told some other people, the, the stars just aligned just right, and we were able to make it happen, and and that's great. I don't get some of the comments to where it's like, yeah, it's an awesome box, but wrong brand. It's like, well, you know, hey, if that's if that's your live or die, that's that's your opinion, you know. I don't but care. Everybody, there's a lot of good boxes out there, and just pick the one you want. And, but I'll put it this way: the snap-on box that I had, I liked it. Yeah. When I set the top box on it, I hated it instantly. Like. From the first minute when I walked around the front, because I was on the back side of it when we put the, the top box yeah. on, I was like, oh, this is going to look great. I walked around the front, I'm like, oh, this sucks. This thing looks like total shit, is what it looks like. Yeah. So, like, Hamilton could see that on my face, too. He's like, you not like it? I'm like, nope, this is terrible, this gap. You so, know? I, I'll say and this. And I hadn't found one thing yeah. on the Matco box that I don't like yet. So, I will say this, in all honesty, that is the tool man's worst fear of putting it together stepping back and the customer going i don't like it it's a I, and i you know there's nothing jogan can do at that point mm -hmm. there's no way that he could have put it together different there's no way you know he without without going too far into it he called upon somebody that could do something about it and it didn't get done at that point at, at that point that's all he could do so I know y'all want that drama where me, I where I say Jovan didn't do what he was supposed to do. He did everything he, he could. Did. He like he I know for a fact he talked to Snap on twice. Yeah. About a trim piece so, or something. And and to prove that theory, when when you went with a snap on box, I had probably thirty people call or text me, Hey, why'd you let the deal fall through? Why'd you let the deal? Why didn't you sell him the rep? Why didn't there was nothing I could do. They there didn't was no make top box they for didn't him. make it. <laughs> you know, it was that was the thing. That's what I tried to tell people. I was like, yeah. they're, they're, that's not what he wanted. There was no way that I could say, well, hey, you know, I, there was no number to call. I called. I found out they didn't have it. There was nothing I could do. Joven did the exact same thing with the blue box. He called. Mm -hmm. He never got anything that could work. So we kind of both struck out at the same time, just not knowing it. Um, but neither one of us, it was that fault. Yeah. So, you know, leading up to that box coming in, it was like, all right, you know, make sure everything's perfect. <laughs> you know, we talked about the gap. I had done got a hold of the factory to yeah, see. Yeah, Michael was... had a guy go and measure the gap between a, the top yeah, and bottom box. Yeah, and so, send me a picture with a tape measure there. And we're like, okay, that's an eighth of an inch. Yeah, that's so we, we did. We, we, right off the bat, we measured a gap on another one. We had a picture taken, had it sent to me. I sent it to Clay. Uh, and before Clay ever responded, I had done sent the picture to... <laughs> Maco going, hey, you know, what can we do right yeah. here? And there was some some great responses from the factory. You know, it's you know because if it wouldn't been for that gap, I'd still have that box. Yeah, and and, and, and that's what's crazy. Like we had the meetup, remember, right after yeah. that, like a couple of weeks after that. 
and everybody comes in and is like, man, I love that box. That thing is so big. It's so pretty, blah, blah, blah. What do you think about it? I say, I hate it. Like, you hate it? I'm like, I absolutely hate it. Like, it turns my stomach every time I walk in here and see that box. They're like, why? Like, most people just overlook that until you show them. Then they're like, oh, yeah, that's a big old gap. Why do yeah. they do that? I said, I don't know why they put the bracing on the bottom of the top box. Instead of inside the top box where there's negative void anyway. Yeah. That's that's a poor design. It's stupid. Is what that so was. I don't know if you saw the comment on the video, but it, it came up, but then it disappeared real quick. It was that the that it wasn't assembled right. That's not true. Like that's yeah. that's just not true. No, that's like not right. I can tell you I know Joven. I don't know him like going out into a club with him or you like, know. Like how do you screw I, up I, assembly? Yeah. You pick it up, you I, set it on the top I know and for you a bolt fact it that, down. Yeah, I know for <laughs> a fact. It that Joven would put it together right and then if it wasn't put together right he would fix it right away and if let's say it wasn't put together right how come the lockers match the height of the top box and bottom box there's a lot there's, you know there should have been at least yeah. a, a two inch gap on one of them yeah right? so I, th I think that it was uh well i know that it was put together right i think it's something that Joven just couldn't he, he i mean there was nothing he could do mm -hmm. they didn't they didn't offer anything uh I feel like if Snap-on listens like Michael does, they're going to be fixing a gap. There's going to be something. I don't know that. I don't know that they even care anymore, really, on the Master Series. I think they're they're wanting everybody to go epic anyway, so that may be why they're just like, Forget Well, my only, my only complaint with that is, and I, and I stress that in, in, in my tool business, if I sell you something, whether it be ADV, whether it be Silver Eagle, I want the quality to still be there. Yeah. Because why should a guy buy an, a Silver Eagle socket and say, well, yeah, I paid it. I paid tool truck pricing for a socket, but it's not the best that I could have got. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. you can buy the American-made sockets, but I want that Silver Eagle to perform just like any other mm -hmm. socket. And the toolboxes, uh, when they announced that they were going to be doing away with a series, I immediately kind of got mad because like, they're going to do away with a 4S. That's what I sell the most of. It's the most price-friendly uh, box. Like, why would you get rid of the baseline box that we sell the most of? And it wasn't. They didn't get rid of the 4S. They actually added uh, to the 4S line and made one bigger. And I think that's that's great. You know, and I think that if you give it to where somebody can be, everybody's happy. At that's a what I like point. because, like, a guy, you know, let's say the 6S, to me, they're... They're a damn good box. Yes. Like, I love the way they feel. I love the way they look. But a lot of people ain't got room for a 31-inch deep. They yeah. need a 28 just because, you know, hey, I've got to put it right beside my deep freezer. That's the only place I've got in my garage yeah. or whatever. Y'all have those options, you know. But I'm going to tell you right now, guys, if you have the option to go to a 31, <laughs> go to a 31-inch box because it is unreal. Like, when you pull that drawer out, it feels like you have to take two steps backwards, you know. It's yeah. nice. That, that thing's deep, man. Yeah, Pulls we, uh, the, the 31, I don't think the video does justice of just how big that box is. And it I don't, don't think there's no way to do that. Um, like the video <laughs> was tell. perfect, but you can't tell, yeah. um, until you pull that drawer open and yeah. it just keeps coming you're like, holy crap. And I like that the drawer comes completely out. Yeah. That, that's something that we, uh, strive on the drawer coming all the way out. Cause, cause when you go to reach something in the back, if it don't, you're going to end up chipping the paint Your on the front Your socket of it. drawer is the main one. Yep. Cause everybody's always got that rail of sockets against the back wall you know that they yep. may not use that much every once in a while and then when you need them you have to try to tilt it and pull the whole thing forward it's just it sucks well that box you just if it's in the drawer you can get it out. yeah you know, well and the, the thing that that, that on my, my box it was standards mm -hmm. the standards were against the back i didn't use standards very much <laughs> but when i did have to have a standard the box didn't come all the way out. I had my, my sockets laid out in the right well. Well, I had to move my metric forward to be able to get them that's, out. That's and, what I had to do on my old box. And, I'd have to slide my rail forward so it wouldn't, like it would get hung up under the lip. Yeah, and see, I'm so. OCD about that. I want my tools in a certain spot. I want it to where when I, almost like what the uh, aircraft 
uh, technicians have to do. They have to know where every tool is. That way yeah. they can tell before they're done, okay, this tool's missing. That's how I want my box. Mm -hmm. That's why I want I don't that. want it to where I'm looking for it, thinking it's lost and it's two drawers down because mm -hmm. I just threw it in a drawer. I don't like that. I can't stand that. Um, <laughs> I don't want to look for it. And, I, and I've got customers that, that are like that. You know, you go in and they're like looking here, looking there. And it's like, well, where does it normally go? Wherever I last use it, it's like, oh. You know what yeah. is funny? Last night I posted a picture of my ratchet drawer, which I'd sent it to you before that. And I had a guy text me, he goes, why do you only have two Matco ratchets in your ratchet drawer? I said, remember, I use my box for overflow stuff and tools that I don't use. He was insinuating that I don't use the Matco ratchets, but all I have in my roll cart or the Matco ratchets, because that's where I use all the time, you know. So when you got a when you've got a toolbox and a tool cart, it leaves mm -hmm. a lot of room to and, and there's no moving that box around every day, like all day. <laughs> so I would not if I used a bunch of that stuff, I wouldn't have it yeah. in that box. <laughs> like I would want it in a roll cart too. That's yep. just I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to upgrade my roll cart now, because my roll cart looks terrible. When I get a little bit close, like I'm having to leave it completely on the other side of the shop. I told Shy, I said, I like that roll cart, but I think I want a white with blue trim to match. Cause well, I think I know where you can get one. <laughs> we'll have to talk about that one of these days. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we don't have to talk. We can Ooh. a couple of clicks on that oh, computer no. right there. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm going to get the little Nipex cutters. And I think I'm going to try one of these because I'm tired of breaking my desk. And I call them the Napa store and they don't never know what I'm talking about even though I give them their own part number off the plastic tray. So that's what we're going to get today. Of course, the new catalog. I think I'm going to talk to Michael about one of these heavy duty coats too because I went up north this week and it was cool <laughs> up there compared to what we was used to. But all right guys, like always, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Merchandise over here, cool tools, discount codes right down there in the description. And if you're not subscribed, take your finger and click that button. It's free. Just click it. Just press it. Y'all have a great week and we'll catch you next time. See ya.